Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today we're going to get into a new reveal from the team about land 1.5 where I actually see the white paper. It's been revealed. I just woke up 6.40 in the morning here. I spent the last half an hour just playing some Underlands rank battles, doing okay. And then I go and see on my phone, Discord message popped up. Yaba says, everyone, we just published the first Secret of Praetoria Phase 2 white paper. He says there's a big reveal. You can find it in the link below. He says it's only one page, but the single graphic is perhaps the most important piece of the white paper. Let's look at it. If you're new to my channel, my name is Dwayne Cunningham. I go by Infidel1258. If you've been wondering where I have been for a couple days because I haven't been creating content, I've been busy with Christmas preparations. You know I work for my local church. That means that there's preparations in planning for Christmas, the big event. Jesus was born, let's go and we're going to celebrate and i actually get to speak or preach at our church on the 31st of december which is wild like i've never done that it's a big deal so preparations planning yeah busyness but um still attending still loving still doing splendorlands and 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 happy to get this content out for you let's get into it okay official announcements here we go if you want to know how to find this stuff yourself follow splinterlands on discord and then access the, the official announcements window you're going to see here this morning at 5 15 a.m my time 8 15 i guess East eastern standard yaba said we just published the first secret of territory phase two white paper and let's see also he mentions the rebellion launch schedule for tomorrow happy harvesting he um uh they've planned something special for the rebellion event and I, all i'm going to say is that i get to be a part of that stay tuned peakd.com splinterlands at splinterlands here we go boom load it up i haven't seen this before i don't know what we're, what we're about to read it says it's a two minute read so let's just read it all and i'll react to what we see secret of praetoria phase two overview low chart mine log camp quarry stone or oh check it out the picture is definitely indicating a progression, a progression of uh, development within your plots of land. So you could build a mine. If you do, that can produce ore. If you have ore, you can move it to a foundry. From the foundry, you can use the ore to produce metal bars. It looks like you also, it looks like based on these arrows flowing into the foundry to make the metal bar, you probably also need, I think, I can't looks like logs from the picture i can't read the word but it looks like uh three logs stacked on one another and that came from a log camp so it looks like to produce those you need those two ingredients to produce planks you need just wood if i'm reading that right and then to produce element stones or elem stones you need logs as well as stone if I was playing a, a, a video game that was this simple, like a board game, like even as I think about, uh, for instance, Settlers of Catan, where you need logs and brick to make wood or to make roads, I think, if I recall correctly, you just start to get a sense from even the importance of what a road would do that you would know you need lots of wood and brick. Plus, in that game, if you're familiar, you also need those two ingredients to build a town. Um, and so it becomes they become extremely relevant in the early game in the late game you need in that game you need grain you need uh, slate um, but just this is going to be a thought process that i want you guys to bring to this analysis when when you get into this deeper for yourself for your plots of land for understanding which resources lead to which resources think through try to think through and it might be imagine imaginative like what could those lead to maybe they will explicitly say and then when they do there has to be an analysis by you as to which makes the most sense to pursue first as opposed to later and i'll shout out tales from the cryptmancer here because i actually just watched one, one video from him on his channel recently he was talking about sps production within land and he was like all of my plots of land 200 I think if i understood correctly all of them are producing sps and if it if it wasn't all it was like all of them that are not producing grain are producing sps so a massive focus on sps and he and he, and, and you, you say why well i mean don't you want resources don't you want grain yes he does 
but he just sees there as being a unique moment for SPS at the start. And so he's he, he made a plan and now he's chasing after that. And then eventually he'll switch into other things. But that, that, that was an opportunity he felt and he, he recognized and he wanted to move after. I think this will this opportunity to recognize opportunity that others are going to miss to see things that others are going to miss is going to be ha present again when we issue more land diversification opportunities more building types more resource generation because certain resources are always better like you just have to recognize any economy as certain bottlenecks and those bottlenecks often are reflective of either a lack of supply of a certain resource that prevent people from going on from beyond that, that point in the, the, the production cycle or, you know, such a crazy demand or certain assets that it, it's, it's slowing down others. So like if, if for instance, like in the example I showed in the picture depicted, if logs are so important, well, I mean, clearly logs are important to make metal bars. They're also important to make um, elm stones. They're also important to make planks. Logs seem like they're going to be really, really important in this simple graphic, but I don't think this is extensive or final. Or I mean, um, comprehensive. I don't think this is all of it. This is a part of it. But recognizing if this was the entire economy, logs would be really critical. Is to get to the end game of this, you need to have them for three different resources. Whereas, or yes, it's important. It helps get metal bars. It is. That's the only thing it does. That's what I mean. Recognizing the distinction in utility and doing it before others will set you apart. Let's read more. Land phase 1.5 has finally arrived and players can now jump into the continent of Praetoria and begin working their plots of land to harvest resources and get a head start on preparing for what's to come. As exciting as this current phase is, however, it provides only a very small glimpse into what is planned for the full secret of Praetoria expansion to the Splinterverse. I assume that's true and I, I look forward to seeing more. The next phase, the next phase, phase two, is where things really jump into high gear. Players need to be choose between over 30 different building types. That's awesome. 30 different building types, guys. I've talked about this before. I need to reiterate again. This is absolutely economic, game-changing, mind-blowing stuff. If you recognize what it means that there will be 30 different building options, it means there'll be at least 30 different resources from those options. What does that mean? Why is that such a big deal? Because each of those will be need a liquidity pool within Splinterlands. They each resource will be paired with DEC. Each liquidity pool that currently exists has 100 to 400 to 600 thousand dollars in it. That means we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars with a DEC that'll be bought off the market or created through burning SPS. I bet it's the latter because SDC is already currently at peg pretty much. So I'm saying massive SPS burn incoming to create liquidity pools. And you think, oh, well, who cares? I'm not going to burn my SPS to participate in some liquidity pool. What does that even do for me? It does big things. It gives you massive APRs. So people chase after them. Even if you're not into it, as I've said often in this space with this game, sometimes things appeal to a, maybe a whale. And sometimes the like the the little krill is like like why why do i care you should care because even if you don't participate it does massive things for the tokenomics of the game people chasing after 10 20 30 40 percent aprs on on liquidity pools means they burn their own tokens or they buy new tokens to burn them so that they can create dec so that they can participate that's an amazing pathway to burning sps and that's an amazing pathway to price appreciation because supply goes down while demand is going up. What does that do? This is huge. This is gigantic. Okay. Uh, 30 build, 30, there'll be over 30 different building options for each of their plots and they can produce 50 different resources. So 50 different, I, I, I thought it was going to be 50 and that find their place within an intricate complex economy. The first draft of Secret of Praetoria Phase 2 white paper is ready and we will, will be revealed over a series of posts right here on the Splinterlands Hive blog post. Yep. So by the way, while they say that, make sure you're following on uh, on Hive. You know, Hive blog, you can, you can, I won't tell you you can become rich, 
participating in this ecosystem, blogging, creating content. But I will tell you, if you are a quality writer, if you've got excellent photography, if you're committed to and you enjoy the process of blogging, there's an opportunity to make money with this. Not to mention, you can track what Splinterlands is doing. You can track what people like myself are doing. You might see early content. If you follow my blog, I often put my content on that channel before I put it on YouTube. Um, okay, so check it out. This is the first of the of those posts. It contains nothing more than one single graphic below. You can find the flowchart that gives the con a concise visual overview of all the resources and buildings. Wow, that are currently planned to be part of the secret territory expansion. You can follow from the top to the bottom to see how everything is planned and fit together in a large interconnected supply chain structure that leads into the ancient ruins. L listen to this. I almost over. I almost blast about this interconnected supply chain structure that leads up to the ancient ruins reconstruction project that is i'm that's the secret of praetoria i think the way it's it, the way it's um uh titled uh sorry capitalized that's a big deal and i think this is the thing we'll be working to let's find out so there's a ancient ruins reconstruction project to unlock the secret of praetoria got it so this is the process that our research is pouring into that will ultimately culminate in the secret of Praetoria and the eventual creation of items and spells and NFT cards. So that the secret of Praetoria is actually the path to unlocking the items and spells. If I'm reading that right, the subsequent white papers reveal posts will go into detail about each resource building feature and expansion. The full white paper will be available on GitBook once final post is published. Before getting into the flowchart, assuming you haven't all immediately scrolled down, we want to remind everyone that everything here is first draft. We absolutely expect that many parts of the white paper will change as we build out the code and the economy details as we, and we work forward to soliciting feedback from the community, community members. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay. And it's relatively simple too. So here we go. The Secret of Praetoria Building and Resource Flowchart. Okay. Secret of Praetoria Phase 2 Building and Resources. Providing liquidity. Okay. Cool. See, look. I just talked about how important the liquidity pools will be. But if you're providing liquidity, I think you're going to access... Like, if you're providing liquidity, you're going to access Elixir. Whatever that is. Magic Resource Production Building. If you have a Magic Resource Production Building. Is that like a... Is that the research one? Okay, anyways, you can you can you can access this and you get that magic resource production buildings, magical resources. This is oh yeah, we can't we can't harvest the the magical souls or whatever yet. Uh, outposts, essences, some of this language I don't really recognize, but that's that's to be expected. And all that feeds into laboratories in one way or another. See how there's kind of three distinctions and they all feed into laboratory which lead to elemental essences, which can be spent in a variety of ways. Well, this is so complicated. I can't possibly interpret this except to just kind of superficially glance and see if there's anything that grabs me. I love how there's every resource is having its own constructive power. Castles and keeps have a unique role to play. Some of the choke points tell you something interesting about the power and importance of those right like we talked about earlier if you can recognize particular and special utility then you might be able to position yourself in a way that takes advantage of that and i think you know as you look at a flow chart like this this is obviously a choke point i don't know you know how easy it'll be to make these um but clearly those will be important for a variety of reasons also wood, like we mentioned in the picture above, has a lot of utility. Now it might be easy to produce wood. It might be more difficult to produce these things. I don't, I don't, I can't really say, but recognizing at first where some of the, some of the greatest sort of utility lies, and then amongst those choices, deciding which feeds, which is easiest for you to create or build. Secret of Praetoria comes out of the Ancient Ruins Reconstruction Project, which requires gemstones or which breaks gemstones or totem fragments. Oh my goodness, can you imagine? Do you while you're pouring into the Ancient Ruins Reconstruction Project, which will be itself a project that comes out of research, which we're people like myself are already taking and doing, you use research and lumber 
to pour into the ancient research construction project, which we said in the blog post above, will lead to the secret of Praetoria. But, but while you're acting in this or rebuilding this project, you will produce gemstones, which I guess go on later, or totem fragments. If that's a choice, that's going to be hard. I don't, because I don't know what gemstones fully are, except for, you know, obviously they have more utility, but of course I want totems. Um, let's go on. So if you get gemstones, you get lapidaria, polished gemstones. Oh, and that leads into items and spells. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. So we can't actually get items and spells until we get polished gemstones, which means that we can't we can't get them until we get Secret of Praetoria. So we talked about Secret of Praetoria being like a multi-year thing. Does that mean that this is like items and spells are multi-years away? I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe it's something like if you imagine you can use enhanced potions, um, like you don't necessarily maybe need all of these things to produce the items and spells because some items and spells might use this and this. And then this comes in later, possibly. Or maybe the ancient ruins. He, I think they've talked about the ancient ruins and the secret of Praetoria being this like multi-year release, but that doesn't mean that we have to wait till the very end for parts of it to, to proc. Maybe some part of it that produces that leads to polished gemstones is available, but it keeps growing and getting sort of more and more utility. I I don't know. I can't say I understand, but I do look as I look at this, it makes me think this whole wing of lapidar lapidarie and polished gemstones will not be possible until the secret of praetoria and that won't be possible okay no no i'm going to correct myself check this out ancient runes reconstruction project has three options not two you either get get gemstones out of it which can go on and produce these which can produce items and spells which will be so that's going to be like as soon as this happens as soon as we can access these building distinctions and uniquenesses you should be able to go all the way down to here but um if you're pouring into ancient ruins you simultaneously could choose i think totem fragments or to pour into the secret of praetoria and and i think it's like probably it's a it's one two or three it's not one two and three i i, I suspect anyways looks great i'm excited what do you think I mean, in the comments below, especially about this in particular, are you reading this the way I'm reading this? You can choose out of the ruins, gemstones, dragons, or Praetoria. And and one second question, do you, the, these polished gemstones, this is not going to wait, right? Like this is clearly chaining on and we can produce this even before Secret of Praetoria. They're not connected. So the Secret of Praetoria is not going to hold up polished gemstones and it's not going to hold up items and spells. Is that your read? Let me know. Have an amazing day. God bless.